What the Farmer Listens To Radio Broadcast, August 1926 The National Farm Radio Council has been making a nationwide survey of farms where radio sets are owned to find out just what the farmer wants to hear over the radio. The basis of this survey was a questionnaire of 18 questions. 25,000 of these questionnaires were sent out directly to farmers by the National Farm Radio Council, and many thousand more by other cooperating agencies such as agricultural publications, radio stations, and agricultural colleges. The resulting information, based on tabulation of 44,550 individual answers, has been compiled in an elaborate booklet, a copy of which we have recently received. The average urban listener doubtless has the impression, as had we, that the farmer is most interested in having himself uplifted and educated, for the reason, no doubt, that every program we hear announced as a special feature for farmers is of such uplifting or educating nature. But lo and behold, it seems the tired farmer, just as the tired businessman, is more eager to be entertained by his radio than taught. According to the survey, orchestra or band, educational talks, weather reports, market reports, and singing are the features with the greatest appeal. But first place is won by the orchestra, with farm talks trailing in second. Weather reports and market reports have about the same general appeal. A wide decline of interest is registered regarding vocal efforts. Some slight interest in church services and in the broadcasting of plays was shown. Other features did not excite sufficient interest to be charted. Under educational talks were classified talks by farm leaders, talks by agricultural production and marketing experts, convention speeches, and the like. While the orchestra and band were given first place, there was a general objection to jazz, and a general demand for more Hawaiian and old-time music. Vocal selections were not popular, and those who wanted vocal were carefully discriminatory. Male voices were preferred, particularly male quartets. A soprano voice found general disfavor among farm radio audiences. In some sections where radio stations have developed their own dramatic talent and real radio dramas are broadcast from the studios, genuine interest and approval was registered. News bulletins were in general demand. Radio as an important factor in the marketing of farm products was illustrated in the National Farm Radio Council survey by specific reports from 43 states. An amazing total of 46% of the replies gave specific examples of cash savings affected by the use of radio. Practically every report indicated the importance and value to the farmer of having market reports from 24 to 48 hours earlier than they are available through any other medium. A graphic account of just how this market information serves the farmer we cull from another source, a survey made by Kenyon W. Mix, representative of a New York radio manufacturer. A hog buyer from Kansas City visited a farmer at 9 o'clock one morning and offered him a certain price for a quantity of his hogs. The farmer and his wife demurred, complaining that the figure was too low. The buyer excused himself and rode off to another farm. Two hours after, the farmer tuned his radio set and caught the 11 o'clock market quotations. The broadcast price for hogs was below the one offered by the departed buyer, so the farmer did some quick thinking. He knew the man was at another house a few miles up the road, so he called up by telephone, got in touch with him, and after saying that he needed some money and had decided to sell at the quoted terms, he closed a profitable deal. The buyer did not know of the sudden price change, and was held to his original quotation by the ethics of the business. In another case, I met a farmer who had for a neighbor a man he intensely disliked. The first farmer had a radio set, and the neighbor didn't. One day, while the former was listening to his receiver, he learned that the price of cabbages had gone up $20 a ton. Thereupon, he went out, bought from his neighbor all the latter's available cabbage, at the old and lower price of course, and then resold at a healthy profit. The other man now also has a radio receiver in his living room. Can you hold with us for some further statistics? We have at hand the report of another survey which is interesting in that it so closely corroborates the above. This is a survey of more than 18,000 farm homes, which is being made by the farm women themselves, under the guidance of Mrs. Mary C. Punk of the Sears Roebuck Agricultural Foundation. 
The results were gathered by some 1,200 observers, each of whom studied carefully the conditions in a small group of homes in her own neighborhood. These are some of the conclusions. Although the silver-tongued salesman may sell the farmer his radio set as a business investment, once it is installed in the home, its chief function is entertainment as far as the man of the house is concerned. 25% of them prefer music to any other program. 24% are making the most of the practical side of radio, using them regularly to get the daily weather and market reports. This is especially true among Corn Belt farmers in Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Indiana, and Ohio, where 42% state that they rely almost entirely on weather and market information which their radio brings them. Down in the cotton country, both east and west of the Mississippi, farmers still prognosticate coming weather events by the look of the sky and the smell of the wind. 3% only give this as an important feature of their radio programs. Church and sports by radio make little appeal to the farmer, according to his wife's report on him, and he still prefers to get his political opinions firsthand at the general store. Farm women, as a rule, like the household homemakers programs best, for 41% tune in on these most frequently. 31% prefer musical programs, 8% want lectures, 1% are especially interested in farm talks on gardens and poultry, and 3% enjoy their radio most for the church services and sacred music it brings them. The Thrifty Housewives of New England pull the largest vote for the Homemaker's Hour, with its hints on economics and new recipes. Corn Belt Farm Wives run them a close second, probably due to the circumstances that these two sections are close to stations which specialize in programs of help and interest to rural homes. Farm women in the Tobacco Lands, Kentucky, and the Virginias will tune in on anything, just so it is music, and they likewise are the most enthusiastic about church and religious programs. Women in the cotton-growing states west of the Mississippi, like their husbands, enjoy the serious educational programs. 37% will always fish around in the ether after a lecture. But farm folk, on the whole, are not prone to be fussy about the kind of entertainment they can get over the air. 18% of the men and 16% of their wives refuse to state a preference because they like it all so well. The most radios are found in the New England states, New York and Pennsylvania, where they have invaded 38% of the homes. The Central Corn Belt, Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio run a close second, 33%. But the eastern cotton states should be the radio salesman's paradise, for radio has found its way into only 3% of the homes.